do not buy a Tesla unless it's this one. With some big price increases seemingly coming every few weeks to all Tesla models and a brand new Model Y rumored to be coming right around the corner, I've gotten the question from friends, family members, and even you guys watching these videos on what Tesla is the right one to buy. Should you go with the long range model? Should you splurge for the performance? Or is the rear wheel drive standard range plus the perfect way to go for most people 99% of the time? Well, I've got a couple of uh, controversial takes here. I'm curious to see if you guys agree or if you don't, but uh, let's find out. And a huge thanks to Brevity for sponsoring this video. So the Tesla lineup as it stands right now ranges from the rear wheel drive standard range plus all the way up to the performance Model Y. You sort of have the best of both worlds with three and the Y. Of course, there is the Model S and the Model X, but I feel like they're sort of more in a class on their own. So I know the vast majority of you guys watching uh, these videos really tend to focus on the Model 3 and the Model Y. So that's what I'm really going to focus on in this video, at least this time around. Maybe I'll change that next time. If you guys want to see more of a detailed buyer's guide on all models, be sure to subscribe to the channel hit that button right down below and while you're down there hit a thumbs up uh, that would definitely uh, help this video out I'd sincerely appreciate it but uh, yeah in this video let's mainly focus on the Model 3 and the Model Y and as it stands right now as of the filming of this video though I'm sure the prices are bound to change the lineup ranges from the 47 ish thousand dollar real wheel drive Model 3 all the way up to the 63 ish thousand dollar performance Model Y and of course this is excluding any wheel upgrades any paint color upgrades on the inside the outside and this of course does not include the optional $12,000 full soft driving package, but even just on this alone, just judging the base configs, which sort of gets you guessing, is that price increase really worth it? And even, not even that, is it really worth it to go from the standard range Model 3 up to any other option? Or is the rear wheel drive Model 3 just the best way to go? Honestly, I don't think the upgrade is actually worth it for most people. And let me be clear, obviously there is a difference between the Model 3 and the Model Y. One is a crossover, one's more of a sedan, one's sportier, one's more utilitarian. There is an obvious difference between the Model 3 and the Model Y. But putting that aside for a second and assuming, according to rumors, we are going to get a standard range Model Y sooner than later, sort of gets you guessing, what about the standard range version of the Tesla? Is the cheapest Tesla the best way to go for most people? I actually think it is for four big reasons. And just to keep things simple, I know technically this is not the standard range plus anymore. It's just the rear wheel drive model three. And technically there's the standard range or the all wheel drive model Y. Just for the uh, simplicity of this video, I'm gonna refer to the cheapest Tesla model as a standard range plus, just because it's way easier than the tongue twister that is the rear wheel drive and the all wheel drive models. A little complicated for me in this one, so let's keep things simple. So number one here, let's start with hardware. In terms of the look of the car on the inside, on the outside, the screen, the seats, the paint color options, everything inside of the cheapest Tesla is exactly the same as the higher end Teslas with very few exceptions. You're getting the exact same processor, the same beautiful screen, the same seats, the same heated wipers, the same software. You could not tell at a glance um, one from the other unless you sort of looked at the badge on the back. But even then, I don't think that badge is worth the price. In terms of hardware, you're getting the exact same car, the exact same features. The cheapest Model 3 looks basically exactly the same as the highest end performance model specced to the gills that's, uh, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars more expensive. In modern Teslas, there are only a few major hardware differences to really take note of here. There's battery, there's motor, and there's speakers. Now, I'll get more to range in a moment, but the standard range Model 3 and the new Model Y will have less range because of different battery tech. For their lower end cars, Tesla is using an LFP battery, which has its advantages and its disadvantages. It is a little heavier, so the car might not be as peppy as the previous battery, though it's still plenty fast. Uh, but also this LFP battery can be charged to 100% with no risk of doing any harm to the battery or causing any kind of degradation, which is a little perk, it's super cool. They can charge to 100% all the time and not run any risk of doing any harm to the battery inside of the car. The standard range Model 3 also is a single motor car while the long range of performance models of the 3 and the Y are dual motors. So that's going to make the standard range a little slower and uh, it's rear wheel drive, not all wheel drive. So just keep that in mind uh, depending on the climate you live in. And also, yes, the audio system is slightly different. On the standard range Model 3, you're getting what Tesla calls their partial premium interior, meaning you have an audio system that still sounds really good, but it's missing some speakers, it's missing an amplifier, and it is missing a subwoofer most of all um, that uh, is a big uh, difference maker for a lot of people 
well depending on the type of music you listen to. Now, is this reason alone to spend thousands of dollars to upgrade to the long range or performance model? No, I don't think so. And I also wouldn't be surprised if sometime in the near future, Tesla does change how they're doing this. The standard range Model 3 has always had their less than uh, premium audio system. But according to what I know from the Model Y, when Tesla was offering the standard range Model Y, that had the full audio system in there. So I wouldn't be surprised if when the time comes that Tesla brings back the standard range Model Y, which might be very soon, they could sort of change the standard range Model 3 a bit to give the full audio system in all cars. That would definitely be best for everybody. That would definitely take away one of the barriers to entry for many people and one of their big worries with the standard range Model 3. Now, before we continue breaking down the best Tesla you can buy right now, I want to take a quick break and show off my favorite backpack of all time made by this video sponsor, Brevity. This Brevity backpack basically gives you the best of both worlds. It's got a sleek, minimal design that is super comfortable and lightweight, really comfortable to carry around with you and use as your everyday backpack. And it's also incredibly versatile too, packed with a ton of pockets and storage space that'll carry items big and small, perfect for something as small as AirPods or as big as a laptop. I'm sure like me, many of you guys are either going back in the office or you're at school and you're looking for a great backpack for your laptop and this Brevity backpack is just perfect. It's got this really nice, spacious, water-resistant laptop sleeve that can fit a 16-inch laptop perfectly and offers fantastic protection on the go. It also features a built-in luggage pass-through, water bottle holder, and of course, backed by a lifetime warranty and 5,000 five-star reviews, this Brevity backpack is gonna be the perfect solution for you. And personally, I'm a fan of sort of the subtle, sleek charcoal gray, but if you do want more of a splash of color, the Brevity backpack is available in 11 super vibrant color options. I am just a big fan of this Brevity backpack. It's super comfortable, it's lightweight, it's got an excellent design, and it's packed with plenty of storage and pockets to store what you need when you're on the go. So if you guys want to check it out for yourself, learn more and pick one up for yourself today, just hit the link right down below or head to brevity.co slash Robert Rosenfeld one and use my special coupon code Robert Rosenfeld 10 at checkout to get 10% off your first purchase. Again, hit the link down below to learn more and use my special code Robert Rosenfeld 10 to get 10% off your first purchase. For number two, we've got to, of course, talk about range. The rear-wheel drive Model 3 packs 267 miles of range, and the leaked, rumored standard range Model Y would bring 279 miles of range to that vehicle as well. And I know this sounds like too little, but after owning myself personally a 2019 standard range plus that had a maximum range of 240 miles, I gotta say that I never really had range anxiety. This was more than enough nine times out of 10. And even if you don't have a home charger, depending on how much you actually actually drive, this is all going to be more than enough range to go to work, go home, and only have to charge like once a week, even with going out occasionally. I know it's certainly not for everyone, but I think there's definitely this common misconception that you need to have the maximum amount of range possible, that you need to have the biggest battery possible, that yes, for some people, this is the case if you do a ton of driving, if you really have no way to charge reliably, if you do a lot of road tripping, then yes, uh, having the biggest battery possible is the way to go, but if you're just looking to get an EV to save money on gas, you're driving around casually around town, you're running errands, you're going to and from work. If you could even just charge reliably once a week somewhere, this is not a bad problem to have at all. And also, if you can charge at home, even trickle charge, then I think the standard range uh, battery uh, capacity and the range you get from that is more than enough for most people. Not for everybody, but I think for the majority of people, 270-ish miles of range is going to be plenty uh, for many people watching this video. The third reason I think the standard range Tesla is the way to go is because of the tech inside. Obviously, the prices have steadily risen on these cars over the past few months, but even now, for a sub $50,000 car, you're getting some incredible tech packed inside. This car is getting constantly better with free over-the-air software updates. You're able to stream music. You've got a giant touchscreen with Google Maps and games and a Tesla theater to watch stuff. And of course, autopilot and full self-driving. Uh, autopilot, obviously, is standard, and full self-driving is an option that you could pay for that really takes your car's uh, autonomy levels and its driving levels to well, a whole new level. Autopilot is an amazing driver assistance package that comes standard with all Teslas. It makes road trips or long drives so much more doable. It basically takes uh, all the hard work out of your hands and takes it to the car. And it's so cool to see included with every single Tesla. It used to be an optional package that you'd have to pay for, but now Autopilot, which is uh, auto steer and driver aware cruise control, is standard with every single Tesla, which is just fantastic to see. Even better though, is that if you do want to opt for Tesla's full self-driving package, whether you want to buy it outright or subscribe to it monthly, you have 
have that capability with the cheapest Tesla. The cheapest Tesla under $50,000 has all the same hardware, all the same cameras, all the same sensors. So if you want to do full self-driving, you can. You can have that full suite of auto lane change, auto park, smart summon, all that is at your fingertips. And also, even if you wanted to join the full self-driving beta and have the car drive itself, you can do that. You do not have to have the higher end car. You don't have to spend more money on the performance model. The cheapest Tesla has the full suite of capabilities, which is really awesome to see. You cannot say that about any other car on the road. Really, I guess, well, maybe some, but not every other car on the road. Super cool that Tesla's cheapest uh, model does have the full self-driving capabilities. If you want to buy it or subscribe to it, you've got that option with the cheapest model, which I love. And number four is an obvious one, and that, of course, is the price. Again, the cars have gotten steadily more expensive. We've seen a price increase after price increase every couple of weeks, so definitely order one now if you uh, are uh, thinking about getting one sometime in the next few months. Uh, but even for its current price, again, under $50,000, you're getting an incredible value for this rear-wheel drive model, and even better, hopefully with the standard range Model Y coming soon, you're going to get one heck of a value with a pretty incredible car. The Santa Range Teslas are delivering a ton of value with the hardware, the tech, the driving experience, the look, the interior, the exterior. It's an awesome value and an awesome purchase for the price that I often think gets overlooked. And for some people, yes, the price to step up to the long range model or the performance model may be worth it and you may want some of the features that come with those models. And uh, maybe the range just isn't enough with these standard range models. Maybe the sound system isn't the best. Maybe you want that extra speed or the extra range. I get it, that's totally fine. But I think for most people, the standard range Tesla is the way to go. You're getting all the tech. You're getting the look and the advantages of a Tesla. You're getting a full, you know, fully electric car. Uh, you're getting uh, all the capabilities. You're getting the same software. And I think for many people, you're getting as much range as you need. The standard range model, the cheapest Tesla, I think is actually the best option for a lot of people. You don't need the long range and you don't need the performance. This is probably the best bet for you. And you could save yourself a considerable amount of money by not stepping up to the long range and going with the cheapest model. And again, I say all this from experience as someone who owned a standard range plus Tesla Model 3 for many years, who lived with that car even when it had uh, even more limitations than the current models and with less range, I really love that car. Obviously, there is an adjustment going from a gas car to an electric car, and I think that's really where the range anxiety comes in. And for me, yes, I'm not doing a ton of driving, but I did do a fair amount of commuting and I was uh, doing some road trips with it, but I think that uh, overall, I love the car. The shortcomings were not all that much. The sound system was still plenty good and the range it offered was still really good. Maybe it meant an extra little uh, top off while supercharging or maybe it meant uh, not as much uh, days to go without having to charge. But if you can sort of figure out a way around those things, I definitely think that this is worth it. And the price difference between the standard range model and the higher range models is not insignificant. So I would definitely recommend you sort of do your homework and see if the standard range model is right for you. Again, the standard range rear wheel drive model three is available right now for 47 ish thousand dollars and the standard range Model Y was on again, off again, but it is going to be coming back. There was an EPA leak that leaked this model is coming back very, very soon with its own advantages and disadvantages of that car as well. But if you're looking to get a, an electric vehicle, you're looking to get a Tesla and you're looking to save some money, the Santa Range Model 3 is a great way to go. And when the Santa Range Model Y launches as well, the lineup is even going to be even more compelling and you're going to have two great models that you can get uh, a really great Tesla experience, a really great car experience from, and also save some good uh, amount of money in the process as well. I love the long range Model Y, but I don't think for many people it's actually worth it. So as always though, guys, I wanna know your thoughts. What are your thoughts on the standard range models versus the other models? Obviously, performance is sort of in a class of its own, but do you think most people need to step up to the long range? Do you think the standard range offers enough range? Is the audio system too subpar to consider? But let me know your thoughts to all this down below. So always, thank you guys so much for watching these videos. I really appreciate it. I'm Robert Rosenfeld, and I'll see you all in the next one.